friends. I'm going to video three pet portraits that I'm starting to work on. Oh, I've got the photos. I've got mock-up photos. So Zoe, <laughs> I just, I love animals. Andy, and Callie. And they're going on the 16 by 20 canvases and I thought of an art tip already. So we're gonna start the video with the art tip, have the intro, and then I'll be back just so you know what's going on. It's gonna be a little different. Um, so I took, here yeah, I'm gonna look for it. I took my trusty little T-square. I have a big one, but I really love this little one. And I measured down a third of the way so six inches, you could go six and a half. I decided I liked the look of six. Um, and I drew a line with watercolor pencil. Here, I don't know if you can see it. There, I drew a line with watercolor pencil. You could use chalk, charcoal, and I also wrote the word love on all three canvases. Here comes the art tip. So you want to draw the line first, rather than just put a couple of marks because the paint or the tape, this is artist tape. Even if you use masking tape or frog tape, some artists use frog tape. Um, you can bend it so that your line won't be totally straight. Now I'm exaggerating with my hand. So you want to line up the tape with your watercolor line. And then I also drew a line around to the side because sometimes when you come around the side, you can bend the tape down or up when you don't mean to. So I'm like, I gotta pop in here with an art tip. Okay guys, hang out with me while I paint these three pet portraits and let's get started. Okay, a little more strategy because we're painting three good sized pet portraits. It's gonna take a lot of paint. So I mixed and I wrote it down on a post-it so that I can remix it if I need to mix more. So what it says is a half a tube, so a two ounce tube, one of those smaller heavy body Liquitex tubes. Oh, I could, I could go get it too when I, after we get through this. So anyway, a half a tube, a burnt umber, a quarter tube of unbleached titanium and two dollops of Mars black. Now that's not very technical, but I can get, that's here's what it, I came up with, is the color. And then I just put a little bit of white with it just to see what the tint's gonna look like. And so this will be the base color that I mix white and some unbleached titanium with to paint the background. So it'll unify all three paintings. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you that you can write down your mixes so you don't forget. And they don't have to be super scientific. Okay, I grabbed the tube of uh, burnt umber. I squeezed, I squeezed the heck out of it. <laughs> and then I thought I'd show you, I'm gonna put it in this um, sour cream container that I have with a lid. And I'll, I'll put all this in the container, mist it a little bit. And then I think I'm gonna put the container in a Ziploc bag too and mist inside the bag just a little bit so that the paint will keep over the, gosh, I don't know, it's gonna take me two months to paint three portraits. Okay, I'm gonna get started painting. A couple quick comments. So I've got the tops of all three canvases painted. I couldn't get three on my little easel. And so they're all different, but they all have the same. It's my base color plus occasionally some um, unbleached titanium and quite a bit of white. And I think maybe you get lighter, darker, We'll figure that out as we go. And then one the quick little tip about, oh, sorry, if I turn away from my phone, I bet you the volume goes down. A quick little tip about taking the paint off. So the paint goes around the back. Let's see if I can do this. You wanna pull it down and away from your paint. So I'm watching in my camera. Okay, so it's not that big a deal. I just thought maybe 
Because sometimes you can, if you pull up, you can actually tear up into the paint. Oops. So there it tore on me. So I'm just gonna start from the back. That's stuck. I burnished it pretty good. And the tape's only been on, oh gosh, a couple hours. I had dinner. And then it's not perfect, I don't know. Oh, there's kind of a little, I think there. But it doesn't have to be perfect. And we can touch it up too. And then I was gonna show you quick my palette. I was gonna show you quick my palette. Sorry if that got quiet. Um, I've got a microphone in my am microphone in my Amazon cart. I've received a couple of um, donations through Venmo and PayPal. So I'm hoping to get that pretty soon. Oh, looks like I sprayed it a little bit with too much water. I didn't use that much of that brown puddle I had on there that I showed you early on. But we will use more of my brown base color on this part. I think I'm gonna end up with enough brown. Here, see if I can show you. I don't know if I can show you this. So I put it in that um, that sour cream container. And then I did miss, it's, this bag's cloudy because I did miss a little water in there. like poop. <laughs> we got quite a bit of brown left because I don't want it super dark. Okay, just wanted to tell you what I'm up to guys. Oops, I forgot to tell you what the big brush is. I think I showed you but it was during the time lapse part. Um, it's an artist loft, level three. I even have the sticker still on it and it's a number... 16. Let's see about how big that is. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna tape all three canvases now and I'm gonna tape it over what I just painted. And then I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little, I maybe a 16th of an inch of the paint hanging out. So I'll paint over a little bit of this lighter top painting. I don't know if you can see it. I hope, hopefully you can. So there's a little bit of my top color poking underneath here. And then I just take a, then I just, sorry, I don't know if that got quiet when I speak away from my phone. I take a palette knife handle and burnish it. I did that with the first time too. I think I showed it on the time lapse. comments and then the rest of this video is going to be time-lapse because I really want to focus on painting Zoe here. So I I took her photo, uh, scaled it, set it up to scale, and then I saved it as a PDF file so I could print it out as a poster because an Adobe Acrobat you can print it out as, as a poster. I have a link to how to do this on my traceables page if that interests you. Anyway, and I really lightened it up so that you can see, like in the original photo, I really can't see that eye and I wanna get the structure right. And then you can see a lot more of her ears here, which I'm not gonna paint exactly, but I wanna know where some of those shapes are. So I, transferred it onto my canvas. So now I have a good roadmap and a good structure. And like, I can't really see all that detail on her nose, um, but that'll help me. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when I print out a crop of her face, you really can't see much. Yeah, I must have printed out a little lighter. I can see a little more of her nose there. And then this one printed streaked, but that's to scale. 
And then here's the mock-up I did, which shows a little more of the color, but see, it's hard to see that eye. And really, you don't see anything in her ears. And then I also have her photo up on my 27 inch monitor over that way. So I can zoom in and see that better too. I think Zoe's gonna be the hardest just cause it's, it's hard to see the features. Uh, what else? Oh, and I painted all three canvases. I've got the other two sitting here. I painted them with the same color, but they're not exactly the same. They're quite similar. Same brush. And then as I go along, I may like darken this corner more on Zoe or, you know, I, we'll just see how that goes as we go along. Oh, and I think we're gonna use pretty much titanium white, Mars black, uh, portrait pink. She's got little pink spots that show through her fur on her skin um, and, and probably a little unbleached titanium. She doesn't have much, but the other two portraits, there's, this is unbleached titanium. You can see it better where it's creamier. Andy has some unbleached titanium in him. Almost a hint of raw sienna. And then Callie definitely has some unbleached titanium in her. So it might help unify the three portraits. And then they're gonna hang them um, next to each other side by side. But you could, they could, you know, hang them vertically or whatever they want to do down the road. Okay, guys, I just wanted to pop in with a couple of comments. Um, hope you enjoy this one. I'll say goodbye at the end.
friends, I'm done with Zoe. So let's see, what do I want to tell you? I use quite a bit of zinc white. So you notice I had quite a bit of texture and shadow. Um, I have Zoe's photo pulled up on my computer and she has more contrast in this area, but I don't, I want the face to stand out. Um, and I took zinc white just to smooth and lighten all that up. Um, this is white white up here where the highlight is. So um, this printout is much grayer than the photo I have of Zoe on, Zoe on my computer. And then this turned out actually, I think, browner. <laughs> and so like, it's kind of difficult. So I usually try to go with the photo on my computer because that's the photo they sent me. That's what they see on their phones or their computers. Uh, my printouts can't quite get as close, but this is handy to have when you're painting the details in the face. Um, so zinc white to soften and lighten, slowly lighten, smooth out, smooth out some of the um, details I can see. What else do I want to say? Oh, I um, put one, sort of one whole layer of Zoe on my canvas and had quite a bit of detail. And then I put at least another whole layer and went back and said, okay, the eye looks you know, more like this. You know, I think I made this thicker. Um, I made this part a little lighter as I'm looking at the photo. Um, I put some more pink in her than I see in the photo because she's got quite a bit of pink here. So I don't, this is a pretty busy area on Zoe and I'm trying to represent it well, but I'm also trying to soften it, you know? So this, this isn't anything you have to worry about a ton. My main focus is, so the light's coming from this direction and I didn't put it on this part of her, that your shoulder, kind of her upper arm, upper leg, because I want to keep the white up here with the eyes and the nose and then a little bit of white here. So you're looking at Zoe's face because that's the most important part of the, part, the portrait. Uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, it's a 16 by 20. It, I lost track of the hours. This is week three or maybe the start of week four. Um, you know, I might work on it even four hours at a stretch sometimes and then not for a day or two. So I suppose this one took me probably 16 hours. Um, but it went real slow in the beginning and then sometimes they wrap up pretty quick. And then it's a great tip, which I already mentioned is the zinc white or use some titanium white and some medium. So you get a, tra a more transparent white. So you get the color coming up underneath that white fur. Oh, here, you probably wanna see it closer. So let's get a better, closer look in case that helps you. Cause there's a look at, there's color in those ears. You could put purple in there too, but since this is a pretty traditional portrait, I put blue in the ears. There's some pink, there's some brown. And see the top of her head isn't white, white. Oh, here you probably wanna see the eyes. So her eyes are dark brown, um, but I made them a little bit more amber just so they'll stand out. I've got two photos of her eyes and you really can't see anything in her eyes. So I'll have to see what her family thinks. I'm just trying to give her a little more life without making it look too odd. And I gave her nose a little more definition I can see in the photo. And then she's got a little pink in her chin, little whiskers, <laughs> lots of layers. Her nose and her eyes may have four layers, you know, as I'm adding little details. And then there's her, her chest. I'm gonna pull out a little bit. She definitely has the pink in her chest and the browns. I hope that helps a little bit, seeing it up close. All right, if you have any comments or questions, um, leave them in the comments. I really appreciate it. I love, love, love connecting with you guys. It's been so fun for me. I think I'm at 800 subscribers and people have been sending money to buy canvases and paint or to support and or to support the traceables. It means so much to me. I really appreciate it. I so appreciate you spending your time with me. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you guys soon. Bye.